What's that cabin over the hill? It's like a chopper. It's like a chopper. What's that cabin over the hill? It's like a chopper. It's like a chopper. Thank you. Welcome. There we go. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Roman Tavern. Uh, if you don't know by now, I'm Sai from Ace Podcast Nation, and this is uh, City Legends number three. And uh, I'm delighted, thrilled, very excited to be joined uh, by former Cardiff City striker and indeed Cardiff City legend, Mr. Michael Chopra. Oh, dude, you said I can't do that. He didn't sign for He's trying to put Cardiff City because we're fucking dynamite. Oh, my God, the Chopper's fucking Stolen Peter Thorne's song. <laughs> <laughs> stolen. <laughs> stolen Peter Thorne's song. Just, just blatantly stolen it. What a night. It did work. It worked very nicely. I like it. I like it. Um, right, part two. Part two, where well, I'm going to just put my feet up and sit and watch as you lot ask the questions. Um, no, we'll let you guys ask the question and then we'll chops will share some stories and answer them. And you know, same thing, but you ask the questions. The question is who wants to go first? Which stories were Stephen Bay Walter? Yeah, <laughs> nah, do you know what? I, I, I was I played against him obviously when it was a derby, uh, when I scored four. Um, but now, nah, look, <laughs> I, had to get, I had to get that one in there, yeah. Now, nah, do you know what? He's he's a good goalkeeper, um, but keepers are mad, aren't they? Um, he was he was mad by water. Um, but yeah, but look, he, at the end of the day, he didn't do great for us, but... I like how you were trying to word it. So yeah, you know, that's how... Um, things go at times, do you know what I mean? It's, you come to some clubs and it doesn't work out, but I've played against him loads of times, mate, and he's he's, he's, a, he's a good goalkeeper. I, I've seen him play well as well. Yeah. I think he just had He was great at West Ham when he was at West Ham. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was really good. Um, really good at West Ham. You said, Ham. like, he's crazy. Who is the craziest player you've had, had the pleasure of playing with? Um, Andy Griffin or Jonathan Woodgate? Uh, Are you, uh, Jonathan Woodgate surprises me. Yeah, he nah. seems quite quiet. And yeah, no, nah, no, nah, the quiet ones are always the worst. Uh, okay. Um, what about from a Cardiff point of view? Cardiff one, player. crazy. Um, different reasons, I suppose, for different did like different aspects of it. Kev could be up there. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> shocking surprise, that, isn't it? Yeah, you, you, you know, you know, Kev, Kev, Kev could be up there. To be fair. Um, but it, it's just a sense of humour, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's that's why why they're good lads, do you know what I mean? You can't you take a little bit out of them and totally different people, do you know what I mean? It's like me. People stop me doing what I want to do and haven't look people people used to call me Peter Pan. That never grows up. I'm forty next week and I'm, I still wanna have a laugh. Exactly the same. Yes, he when, is when you played for Sunderland, did Roy Keane train with you as a player? Yeah, he used to join in the boxes. Okay. Yeah, but he's look. You could tell why he was such a good player. Um, everything was like the highest standard. Um, and if you became a manager, would people be saying that about you? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, Roy, do you know what was good about Roy is how you see him now on the TV is how he was as a manager. If you shit, you shit. He'd tell you straight in your face. I get that. If you're not good enough. And that's how it should be. I've been my managers yeah. that told Don't kid someone on, do you know what I mean? Don't get the hopes up and that sort of thing. Roy used to park his car somewhere else, not in the manager spot. <laughs> So we wouldn't think he's at training, <laughs> right? You know when a manager's like that, you fuck about a bit, you piss about, you don't train 100%. And Roy used to always pick his teams from training. If you don't train well, you don't play. It doesn't matter who you are. How much money you spent, it doesn't matter. Um, Is that a genuine fear factor then, Roy Keane? Well, I don't know if it was fear factor. It was just a case of keeping you on your toes. That If you don't perform in training, 
you train all your players is as how is he trippy. As, is he as intense as he seems? He seems very intense, like to mm. speak to and like Nah, I don't I, I don't know. Um, look I, I don't know um but like I said when this car in a different space or if he wasn't a trainer he'd get training filmed to make sure the lads are properly preparing for games and stuff like that i remember we um we played well, i don't know who we played but we used to stay in a hotel on a friday night um in in durham where every home game we used to stay in a hotel now a girl's come out of one of the lads' rooms <laughs> so what, what he's done is followed the girl to the car he's got the registration plate <laughs> he's checked up on the car then passed probably passed it on to the police or something and checked up on the person who, who the person is got the name and everything so we're sitting in the dressing room the next day and he's, he's gone to kieran on nugsy naira knows knows where he who's uh such and such don't know gaffer <laughs> you sure you don't know such and such nah. <laughs> no girls come out your room last night no nah. <laughs> said okay if I, if I find out the girl come out your room last night you'll never play for this club again so he's, he's proper switched on do you know what i mean if yeah. you don't prepare properly and that's why he was such a great captain for man united because his, his standards were so high and i think when i got there his, his standards were ridiculous like he thought Sunderland players were like man united players yeah. that, that was the problem in, in our first season that someone even though we stayed in the premier league um but look it was it was great to to be managed by somebody that had the standards still high and understand how the you need learn the game and everything and like i've always said to people before you even get on sky what's he like straight you'll and you see it now do you know what i mean he's probably one of the best pundits on tv at the minute because yeah, how he speaks about the game and how he tells players and, and everything do you think he goes back into management at some point he seems like he wants to i think he wants to yeah but i think it'll be hard for him um all these pundits who, are different aren't they? who go on tv and stuff like that you criticize a player you take it very could you could you manage a player that you've just been criticizing all last season yeah so whether he goes into a national team job uh, i don't know whether club job i don't think he'll go back into not, not, not many ex Alex Ferguson players have become good managers, have they? Yeah, well, yeah. trying to think who. It depends who what your class is good, though, doesn't it? I mean, like, yeah, yeah. you've got yeah, like right, stalwarts, like, like, you know, say Steve Bruce, for instance. <coughs> All right, he hasn't gone on and been like a Champions League manager, but he's had a good career as a. Carrick does okay at Millsborough. Yeah, I um, think he's one of the contenders Brian, for the United job at the moment. Brian Robson. Yeah. Done okay, but like you said, there's. Mark Hughes. Mark Hughes. Did yeah, a job years. at the minute. Yeah, but he done well at City. Yeah, no, he did well. He as... did very well for Wales. Yeah, 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 Black, yeah, yeah. And Blackburn. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to know anyone who played under Fergie, how how much of when they were a player, how much of the management you took with them. Yeah, like how much know, of it rubbed okay. off of them. Yeah. I, I think I think Roy learned a lot from. From Fergie, do you know what I mean? Not, you cannot not, but I think you learn a lot from Brian Brian Clough as well when he went when mm. he was at Forest. He always speaks highly yeah, of Brian Clough. Yeah, he probably yeah. speaks highly of Brian Clough than what he does about Fergie. Even though yeah. Do you think it's a shame they fell out and they don't really get on now? Because I think they won so much together <clears> that it almost seems like was, a sh shame I'm, that they don't speak. It is a shame, but I was listening to him last week, I think it was, or the week before why should a player be friends with a manager no because in a couple of years he's gonna he's gonna shit on you he's gonna get rid of you so why 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 get close to him and they were having this conversation about united players be, do they need to be close to van gaal and and this sort of thing and Roy, in a way Roy, roy's right is when you think about it why why should you be close to him yeah. is he going to be close to you when he leaves out the team no, no. Once you're too old or you lose yeah. your fitness it's or whatever, he, he doesn't you, care. Yeah, it's very move you on and get someone else. Absolutely. Uh, who's next? The your manager now, right? How do you manage Michael Chopra? Look, I think 
you know, like, like like a bit like what they've done with me. You've got to let let me enjoy myself. Do you know what I mean? Um, because every 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 year at the start of the season, I'll always be flying because I'd have a good good pre season. If you look at every season I had for Cardiff at the start of the season, I was absolutely flying. It's normally November December that I kind of have a, a real dip in form. Um, is that because there's less time to socialise and do your own thing in between the games? I don't or know. enjoy I, yourself I just, like I just mean in terms it could, of look, it, maybe. It, it could be the enjoyment and that sort of thing because pre-season I used to go back to Newcastle but I'd work hard because I want to I want to be flying. I want to be ahead of everyone at, at the start of the season. I want to be better than everyone coming into the season as fit as I can and everything. That, and I think that's why I score so many goals at the start of the season. Do you know what I mean? Like I said before, look at my career at Cardiff at the start of the season. I think it was just putting the effort in. But going back to your question, I would just if I don't perform like Dave used to do, he, he, Dave used to hammer me, absolutely hammer me. People don't know this. Players don't know this. He used to take me in the office and absolutely rip into me. But that's because my standards were so high and he had set them so high. And if I wasn't fulfilling that, then he'd give me a good kick up the arse, do you know what I mean? Because he knew if I was scoring goals, then pretty much caught for winning games. It's, uh, it's not, it's, it's, I think it's having the structure of knowing like where you stand with a manager, but it's like both ends of the spectrum as well. So if you didn't do well and he rips into you, but then when you do do well, he says, you know, go to Newcastle, come back on Tuesday. It's like that motivation factor in there, yeah. in both both aspects of your of your performance. Yeah, if I, like I said, if if I'm asking the question to go back to, to Newcastle, then I've got to perform. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But what I don't like is players go knocking on his door. Mm. Why am I not playing? Why am I not playing? And he gives them a chance, and they do fuck all. Yeah, that's why you're not playing because you're Can't not good enough. Chance. Yeah, so. Say you say you had said, uh, you know, I want, can I go to Newcastle till Tuesday? And he's, like you said, chuckled and gone, yeah, okay, you've got to do it though, haven't you? Yeah. And then in that game, things haven't gone your way, you've had a bad game. Would you still have asked him to go to Newcastle? No. Well, you wouldn't have even <laughs> broke the <laughs> subject. Just no, I would, pretend I it never happened. Yeah, just, yeah I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ask a question. I'd know mm. that I've got to stay in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, it's easy if you're winning games, do you know what I mean? You know, you know what's needed and stuff like that, but if if you know you're not win, if you're not winning games then why why should you have time off yeah, to go and enjoy yourself time, do you know yeah. what i mean it's you don't deserve it so don't ask don't ask the question is he your favorite manager throughout your career uh i think football wise probably yeah um obviously i was grateful of sir bobby for giving him my debut with newcastle uh making me fulfill my dreams obviously Roy Keane for the help he gave me um, while I had the addiction. But on, on if you if you're talking about football terms and on field, then Dave's probably the best one. Okay. Uh, next, go. Yeah. If you could give a, a young Michael Topper a, a tip. Give Don't gamble. Um look, I well I I and I'm people might think I'm big headed, but I, I could have achieved so much more. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. My reputation when I was a kid was was phenomenal. I was supposed to be the next Alan Shearer, the next Michael Owen sort of thing when I was playing for England and that sort of thing. But I know myself that the gambling stopped me. It stopped me being that that player I was. So if if there was a tip, I would try and I would try and do a little bit differently with the gambling stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because it did affect me mentally. It was it, it, I'm not, it couldn't not. Do you know what I mean? Because going to bed at, and waking up at four o'clock in the morning, it, it's not good. How would you, you perform? It? As much as I did, but I could have performed even better. Do you know what I mean? And some of you have seen a great Michael Chopper, but there could have been an even better one. Do you know what I mean? And, but the gym and... I didn't used to go to the gym. I used to sack it off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I used to hate the gym. I used to... 
we used to do gym sessions and I, I just used to cheat, do you know what I mean? I used to pretend <laughs> that I was doing it and I would just stand there doing nothing. My diet was horrendous. Yeah. We played we played what for the way one game and I turned up with like one of them um Russell's burgers like you put in the microwave. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm walking on the bus with these. The put, put it in the microwave and the lads are thinking, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. <laughs> after after the game we beat I think we beat Watford. I think it was when we beat them uh four 0 off four one. Um Adam Matthews. Adam Matthews scored a, yeah. a chip the keeper yeah. with a with a free kick, I think. Jay scored two that game. Um cracked open a Budweiser on the bus to have the bud. I'm the only one, do you know what I mean? And, that's a must be thinking, what the fuck? What's he going? What's he doing? But it's just, I, I never used to prepare properly for games. Never. But does that make everything which you did on the pitch completely natural ability, doesn't it? That, if, well, you yeah, that's... The, if you didn't have the, the preparation, like physically or mentally, in terms of gym and, and diet and things like this, that means that what you did on the pitch was just pure natural ability, really, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. Um, Obviously, there's a look, bit of tactics uh, yeah. and, and team training. I always, like I that, always but... believed in my ability. I always thought going on the pitch that I'm going to score today. I just had that self belief in the ability that I could do it. Um, even, even look, people say, "Oh, you, you've put on weight and all that. Do you not want to do?" It? I don't have any motiva- motivation now to go to the gym. It's just the way I was as a yeah. as a player and so I just don't go to the gym and and, and stuff like that. Um, Favourite strike partner? Alan, Alan Shearer? Has to be, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Probably, yeah, growing up being a being a Geordie and, and that sort of thing, it's it's it, like playing in the same team and being the captain of England at the time, captain of Newcastle and managing to share the dressing room and I remember having shooting competitions with them for like twenty pound and beating them and stuff like that. And do you know what I mean? It was just just a dream come true to to, to be there and alongside him it sounds like there's a real different side to alan shearer to the public like the one we see on match of a day and the one we see you know in the media yeah. and stuff it does sound i've heard from a, you know a couple of people and from what you've said this evening it definitely seems like he's a very different character i think if on you t- know him. well yeah definitely on tv you've got to be professional course, do you know what yeah. i mean um but when when you're in the dress room when you're in the circle with him he's um he's a, he's a funny guy do you know mm. what i mean People just think he's on TV. He's boring and he stuff like that. Very serious, doesn't he? It's, it's, yeah, he's far from that. He's he's a, he's a good character.